Hi everyone, I now have the honour of introducing our next session with Paul Grayson. Paul, Paul Grayson is a former England and Saints, British Irish and Lions, British Irish, Irish and Lions rugby player. And he will be discussing how to squeeze movement in, as well as going through some exercises you can squeeze in at home. We are now going to play the video from Paul. Afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Legs Matter Lounge. This is clearly not the Legs Matter Lounge. It's my bit of it, which is my office. Uh, that's my dog, Rascal, who has snuck in to join us. Not sure whether he'll be squeezing any movement in. He looks pretty tired at the moment. Anyway, let me introduce myself. My name is Paul Grayson. I am a former Northampton, England and British an Irish Lions rugby player. Uh, a long time ago now, as you can tell, but I've had a career, a lifetime in sport, basically, from a young kid uh, growing up all the way through school into professional sports at the age of 25. Um, and pretty much the last 25 years I've spent either playing or coaching sports at an elite level. So I know the benefits that movement, fitness and general health uh, can have on your body. I also know post a playing career, what not doing movement uh, and training, the effect it can have on your body. So I want to talk to you today about the LNR campaign, the Squeeze In campaign, which is a fantastic initiative to provide people with the information, the knowledge and the help to spur them on to try and change their lower limb conditions through various uh, aspects to do with your general health and well-being. The one I'm going to talk to you about today specifically is about squeezing movement in and how you can do that during your day and what the benefits are for your personal health and well-being and the improvements that you can make in your condition through a range of different exercises. I really would recommend that you, when you see the link, it will appear in this presentation at some point. If you click on the link and register for your um, squeeze in brochure. It is a precious resource. One of the things in that's an inhibitor to people getting involved in in health and well-being is a lack of information. It's difficult to get. I know from personal experience when you are inside a professional sports bubble, everything is given to you from your diet sheet, time to go to sleep, time to wake up, eat this now, drink that then, be here for training. Somebody organizes your warm up they tell you exactly what to do that's the privilege of of having a professional career albeit it's generally a very short one and there's a lot of life left after that now in the big wide world nobody spoon feeds you that information you have to go and find it yourself and that is generally a roadblock for people because they don't know what to look for they don't necessarily know who to trust uh, and certainly they don't in generally they don't want to have to pay for um, a resource if they don't understand or trust it so you get in a spiral of I don't know what to do I don't know where to get my info and then you end up doing nothing and that doesn't help you at all the squeeze in healthy living booklet is an absolute gift it is everything you need to try and make a difference to yourself it goes beyond just um, having lower limb conditions it, it's, it's a nice little roadmap for general health and well-being but with the specifics of trying to improve from the position that you find yourself in at the moment so once again i am going to push it if you can log on uh, register download it gives you everything you need to do so why do we need to squeeze movement in um well it's a strange time in the world obviously it's hard enough to get movement into our daily routines but uh, with what we're all going through at the moment and the changes in our lifestyle do find ourselves in our homes an awful lot so even going for a walk uh, for a period of time that was the only thing you could do outside now it depended on your uh, level of fitness or your ability to squeeze some movement in the benefits are many fold first and foremost if we're trying to improve our condition just getting blood pumping around your body uh, and getting fresh blood into the areas that need it will promote healing. That in association with compression uh, makes a huge difference um, to your to the healing process and the speed with which you can improve your condition. It, there's also 
mental health benefits of doing exercise, of releasing those endorphins, um, is huge, particularly now when mental health is definitely a challenge as we have uh, restrictions placed on us that, that we're not used to. So A, there is the power of healing because you're doing something positive for your body. There is the mental health positives of releasing the chemicals into your uh, bloodstream and generally feeling better about yourself and what you're doing but also as you move forward gradually being able to improve um, ankle mobility strengthening your legs activating your glutes uh, which are hugely important in our movement generally will move you forward and you'll be able to do more and more things and you'll be able to push the boundaries of what you're physically capable of doing at the moment take that longer walk uh, do more in the garden if you haven't done it all already spend time with your kids um, there's no downside to movement as long as you do it right as long as you have the information um, please register and download the squeezing healthy living brochure so uh, I just want to talk to you about compression quickly from a sports point of view and the the importance of it Compression along with hot and cold therapy is the, is the number one recovery method in professional sport. Um, I'm sure we can all remember what we were taught about recovering from injury, rest, ice, compression, elevation. Uh, there's a lot more gone into it since then, but it's been embraced by professional sport because ultimately when you train and you train hard, you degrade your muscles for a period of time and the speed at which you can recover and they can recover and grow uh, increases your ability to go and, and train again. So you will find in any professional sporting environment, compression is a huge part in keeping a keeping athletes healthy, but also their ability to uh, to go and to and to go again. So um, L and R's hosiery kits are beneficial to your condition, but they're also beneficial to the recovery from squeezing some movement in. Because if you do do it, you will get some nice muscle aches uh, and uh, um, that hosiery bouncing the blood back out of your lower legs and getting it back to your heart is all part of that healing process, not just the healing process uh, from whatever condition you find yourself with the other benefit of getting into regular uh, movement patterns and doing some um, low grade training is that it does help prevent other conditions from um, coming to bear. So. What can we do? How can we do it? I've decided to do uh, this little demonstration from in my home office because it is uh, it is a small space. It's not a gym setup, um, but it just gives you an idea of what you can do in a, in a small space or at an office desk uh, in your lounge. Because we've all realised um, that a home gym is literally can be it can be your home. So I'm going to demonstrate. A handful of exercises for you now you can either join in with me now if you like or um, try them later on at your leisure or like I say you can get all the information in the uh, squeezing healthy living brochure so follow me through these wherever you are generally movement shouldn't hurt there's a difference between a gentle muscle ache from doing some exercise and impingement of a joint uh, or real soreness and you will know you will know the difference so don't do anything that compromises you or feels uncomfortable but do accept that if you are doing some of these exercises uh, you might your heart rate might go up a little bit uh, and you might feel a gentle ache in those muscles in your legs as we try to squeeze some movement in so bear with me I'm going to move to the back of the room I'm no Joe Wicks uh, but I have some experience in jumping around for a living and let's start I've worn white socks so you can hopefully see my feet uh, let's start with ankle mobility and let's do it from let's do it from a seated position I'll do it front on and I'll do it side on so that you can get um, a decent look rascal's still not interested in what's going on um, so but getting your ankles flexible and mobile Obviously, we start the blood pumping, but also we're doing good things for the muscles around uh, our lower leg and also ankle mobility, which helps you with your, uh, with your balance and your proprioception. So let's start with some ankle extensions with one foot flat on the floor, left foot, uh, right heel into the ground, 
and extend our toe downwards and lift our toe up. Extend our toe downwards and lift our toe up. Extend our toe downwards and lift our toe up. Now you should feel a squeeze in your calf uh, both ways when it contracts as you point your toe and when it extends as you lift it. If you can hold that for a two or three count at either end, you'll feel the benefit. Eight, nine, ten of those. Alternate legs. And already I can feel myself uh, warming up. So now we've got some of those in and we've got our ankles going. Ankle circles are another um, way of getting our ankle flexibility going. Now, I will bore you for a minute with core stability. It's really important that when we're seated and we're doing exercises that we look after our uh, midriff, our core. People talk about engaging your core. What does it mean? How do you do it? Well, simply squeezing your belly button towards your spine a fraction will engage your lower core. Once you feel that little squeeze, you're in a much better position to start doing movements like leg extensions, uh, which we're going to do now into our ankle circles. So once that's engaged and you're nice and tall, if you need to hold the side of your chair for stability, whether that be an armchair uh, or an office chair like this, hold on, raise our legs forward like so, and rotate your ankles. One clockwise, one counterclockwise, one this way, one that way. Uh, write your name in reverse. Spell the alphabet, write your kids' names. I don't know your kids' names, so I've spelled that wrong. Um, what you'll feel there is a nice little burn in your quads as well at the same time, but also ankle flexibility increasing. So you would do those for as long as you can hold it and then have a rest and then do it again, maybe two or three times just to get yourselves going. Let's move into those, uh, get into those quads with some leg extensions. So I'm going to move sideways so you can see. Hopefully stay in shot. Excuse me, rascal. So here I am sitting in my chair. I'm going to go the other way. Just realised I'm sitting in the shadow and you can't see me. So I'm going to sit here like this, nice and upright, straight back, squeeze that belly in, legs underneath me. Leg extensions, you're going to feel tension in your thighs, in your quads, front of your legs. So, brace and lift both of those. This chair's quite short, so it's about halfway down the back of my um, thighs. If you want to sit on a deeper chair or from, and have that closer to your knees, here will give you more support. As you get stronger, you can have a, a shorter chair like that. Lift and hold. And have a good two or three count and back down, lift and hold. Now if you do eight or 10 of those, three times through with a rest in between, you find you get a nice solid ache in those quads. Quads help stabilize your knees. Knees help stabilize your calves and ankles uh, and everything knocks on to the next bit Get some ankle rotations in if you want. Double exercises up as you feel um, as you feel comfortable. I'll do one more seated one, specifically seated, and this is for inner thighs. Um, you can use a ball if you've got one. I've got a cushion here. Whoops! Just work the dog up. And effectively sit, feet shoulder width or just slightly further apart. Hold the cushion between your knees. And you're gently going to squeeze, you're going to squeeze in. Squeeze your knees closer together and you will feel, you will feel these muscles here on the inside of your thighs. Gently working, squeeze in and hold, two, three, gently let them out, squeeze in and hold, two, three, gently let them out. Same again, eight to 12 of those, as you feel comfortable, as you get stronger, you can hold for longer, or you can use a more uh, robust item. Maybe squish two cushions that way to create greater resistance. You really can um, change it up as you wish. So that's, we've done front of our legs, we've done our ankle mobility, we've done our inner thighs, 
uh, all seated. You can do upper body exercises, sat down, shoulder raises, you can do core twists. Um, so you can get a decent workout seated. Obviously, if your fitness levels are better than that, you want to use your seated position to um, as a training aid. So let's talk getting into those calves and strengthening your, uh, the, the back of your legs, help with proprioception. If you've got ankle mobility, this gives you ankle stability. Using the chair for balance, a chair or a wall always have something that can stop you should you lose your balance. And again, I'm going to say squeeze your core, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your quads, even though it's the calves that we're going to work. And then simply let your weight go forward into the balls of your feet. Squeeze and extend. Hold at the top. Let that go back down again. Lean in. Squeeze up. Two, three. And control back down. If you feel that's too easy for you, let's go one-legged. Squeeze in. Squeeze up. You can alternate your feet, 10 each side, 8 to 12, something like that, whatever's comfortable for you. I can already feel that. I'm warming up. I've got a jumper on and I probably shouldn't have. But you don't need to be getting into full tracksuit and trainers to, to squeeze some movement into your day. You've just got to use what's around you. Like I say, use the resource that I've spoken about so far. So we've, done it. we've got into our quads. We've got into our calves. We're activating our glutes and our core all the time. So let's use our chair to... Um, uh, to make a big body movement, a full body movement, which would be a squat. So from a seated position, again, I'm going to, no, I'm not, I'm going to face the wall. I'm going to face the wall because once I've stood up, I want something to be there for me to balance. You can have a chair in front of you or a frame or a table, stand to a table, stand to your desk at work. But for this demo, uh, one of the misconceptions about a, a squat is that you have to have your uh, feet pointed dead straight forward. Uh, actually, you want them just fractionally turned out so you can keep your knees. It's easier to keep your knees over your feet. Safer way to squat for your uh, for your back and your knees and your ankles. Also easier to keep your balance. So turn your toes out a fraction when you want to get up from a seated position. Shoulder width apart, toes slightly out. Nice and tall and engaged through our core. We want to bend forward from our hips. And then we're going to squeeze and stand up. It doesn't have to be in a praying position, but get your arms forward for balance. So we go forward, we squeeze, and we stand up. Balance if I need it on the wall. Now, the most important part about when we stand up, obviously our quads and our hamstrings are engaged, but, but the butt is really important. For the last part of this exercise, your backside, I want you to squeeze your glutes together and that finishes the movement. So we get to here and then we squeeze, pushes your hips forward and you're stood uh, bolt upright. Now, if you can do it, the movement can be controlled on the way down as well to a seating position. So keeping your hands out in front, break from the hips, sit, touch the seat and back out again, if you can. Break from the hips, squeeze, those thighs, squeeze those glutes at the top. Um, so look, there's some simple ones and some fairly basic demonstrations uh, from me of how to squeeze movement in. The, the importance of getting it into your life, as I've said, is many fold. How, I need to get fitter, I'm out of breath. How do we do it? How do we make sure that we're organized to do it? Going back to sport as an example and having that planner given to you on a daily basis, just have a guest in the background. Hello, Joel. Um, having that information given to you on a daily basis, it, it, makes, it makes it easy. But where do you get your motivation to do it from? Well, everybody will talk constantly about sports people setting goals and the big dream is to win the Olympics or to, or to win a World Cup or to play for the British Lions. That's the big dream. The journey to get there is completely different. So your goal might be to walk a 10K or, uh, or enter an event with your, with your kids or just be uh, more healthy and, and more mobile or to improve your um, lower leg condition to a point where you're, you feel more free 
you feel better in yourself and you're in control of in, you're in control of that condition i would highly recommend making your plan um and whatever that big goal is the the building blocks to get there start with exercises like these with just gently moving yourself up so there are four things i think they're really important what's your goal once you've decided what you want to do or where you want to try and get to that's fine that sits out there on its own and you refer to it every now and again for motivation what why am i doing this what am i trying to achieve the next part is the reality it's where am i now uh, whether that be i'm pretty active and i want to increase that or i want to be able to comfortably um, get up from my chair and move around or i want to be able to walk for 30 minutes or spend more time in the garden as i said earlier um, now your options and opportunities are the next phase of that what are my options and uh, what are the opportunities to do it well one of your options is to get the information from lnr uk the squeeze in healthy living brochure that that is a great resource to give you a roadmap to try and get to a position where you squeeze movement in regularly and all the other things all the other healthy living advice uh, and instruction that come in that booklet so that is a genuine option and an opportunity for you to put yourself in a position where you've got all the information to be able to make a difference to yourself and the last part of it is having the will to do it now you can decide i'm going to do it tomorrow what, what time are you going to do it tomorrow well actually like anything else if you write it down on the list if you make a note if you put it in the legs matter planner if you write a list down you are more likely to do it across the world there's a massive business in teaching people how to make a list and do it better it comes in all sorts of names but i promise you if you write it down and it's there for you to see and you tick it off when you've done it you'll feel better about yourself and there's a much higher chance that you'll do it so work out your goal find out where you are now get your squeeze in healthy living brochure which will give you everything you need to decide to make a difference and then go for it absolutely go for it the last part of it is tell someone what you're doing share it with a friend share it with us uh, make sure that someone knows what you're trying to do because there's nothing like a little bit of help or motivation from outside on those days where it doesn't feel like there seems any point i promise you there is no downside to to any of this uh, i really hope you've enjoyed this session i need to go for a shower it was much too difficult for me but um enjoy this week enjoy the legs matter lounge and it's been great to spend some time with you Really enjoyed that session. Thought it was That's fantastic. Great, yeah, <laughs> it was just good to hear the, how simple these things are, the simple changes we need to make. Um, and they they can be profound for some people. And it's it's where you start, isn't it? The simple I really liked how he summarized it at the end when he kind of talked around really setting achievable goals, but also something to really aim on in the future um kind of finding out where you are your plan so what you need to do each day getting that information um the will to do it and to tell somebody is is it, just simple things that will really help anyone i also really like the link between kind of the sporting aspect of it as well and compression and how we brought it back to kind of lower limb conditions and what the similarities are in between it as well which i thought was really interesting i think for me the goal setting is is absolutely fundamental and um, I think for me I work with quite complex patients complex lives where their mobility is just really gone down so sometimes the goals could be as simple as I'd like to pick up my grandchild I would like yeah. to walk to the corner shop or I'd like to walk around the block and they, they are really really important goals to be able to set in stone. So you just go, I'm doing this because that's where I want to get to. Not because I feel like doing my exercises today. Don't wait until you feel like it. Set something down and you just go, I'm going to do this for two weeks, regardless of how I feel. And yeah. then you can start to change the cycle of your day as well. Um, and so 
in and sharing it as he said with someone else you go i want to get to um pick up my grandchild um you know uh, from their school or something and you just go how are you doing with that where have you got to with that you go well actually i'm feeling like i can at least get out of the chair and feel much more stable now mm -hmm. and so on and so forth so just to the little steps um, are really, really important, I think. Um, I think the other thing I would say, Jan, is about the stability that those exercises, they look too simple to be able to do anything with them, but they're not. They, they are really, again, they're really important um, for our stability. So if people are exercising their ankles and, and doing some simple squats, getting out of a chair, really change and we mustn't underestimate the power of those simple changes um well i think leanne you've got a question as well so hi i used to work for long hours my legs would be very tired can i do these leg exercises to relieve tiredness 100 percent, yes i think for me working from home i've noticed that i sit for much longer periods of time than my legs will be tired and achy after a long day. So even do them doing them underneath my desk will really help me, but definitely as well for those long hours. And the two biggest risk factors that are either there when you've got the jobs, it's either standing for long periods of time, sitting for long periods of time, so the two real air, risk areas. So getting those exercises in, those movements in can really support you with that. I, I would agree that sort of ability to keep people sort of as he was saying he was feeling just a tad warmer when he was doing again very simple exercises and that helps to release endorphins and helps us feel better as well so the tired legs are also connected with our sort of shut down lives a little i think uh, so anything that just gets us going a little um is important i think definitely Um, I was just wondering about the stretches of the ankles as well. Um, uh, I think we uh, sort of linked in a way to um, a previous session we had with Ina about shoes and, um, and footwear and the importance of footwear. And those exercises um, um, that were described also um, help us use our shoes better and vice versa. And anything that helps us uh, exercise and stretch our ankles um, is really important. And I would also add, Leanne, that people think that their, their ankles are maybe a little fixed or oh, I've been like this for ages, it won't change. Mm -hmm. But actually, we see change all the time. But it needs a little bit of persistence and it needs someone to follow through the instructions, not just to wiggle. They need to stretch and hold and point and hold. It needs some a little bit of work. It won't just happen. There is no uh, magic wand for increasing mobility without using your muscles. Definitely. Um, and this video will be on the Legs Matter website and on YouTube as well. So if you want to go back and replay his videos over and over again, because he does it so well. <laughs> um, so please feel free to go back and have a little look at him as well at any time. And also the, the resource that he spoke about as well. So squeeze in, please visit the squeezein.life website, but also the Accelerate and Legs Matter kind of movement plan that they've created is also a brilliant resource as well. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Lee.